Hello everyone and welcome to this People in Places special. I'm Ken Watlington. This half hour, we're taking a look back at some of our favorite People in Places stories from 2021, from breweries to restaurants to historic sites and much more. There is so much that makes Eastern North Carolina a great place to live. And that's the goal of this series, to shine a light on some of the phenomenal people and amazing places that make ENC unique. Whether it's a woman who dedicates her time to making sure active duty troops get the care they deserve, or the vodka company pumping new life into a forgotten piece of Kinston's history, there are great stories to tell all around us. And we begin with a trip to Washington County to visit a small one room church just outside Roper. But this story is more than just the church's nearly 170 year history. It's also about the dedication of one woman to make sure the church remains a part of the community. Along the southern shore of the Albemarle Sound. This is part of an area of the state that is the cradle of North Carolina. Sits Rehoboth Methodist Church in this same spot since 1853. We need to remember where we came from, which is what stimulated my curiosity in this place because it tells a lot of stories. Stories Chris Barber is now helping to tell as chair of the Rehoboth Church Preservation Society. After a 30 year career in education, Barber retired in 2006 and almost immediately found herself at the forefront of keeping the church intact. Our mission is to preserve it so that Rehoboth Church remains part of not only the religious community, but the cultural and historic community. We want it to continue to be a center of activity. These days, there's only a handful of services a year here. It stopped being a full-time church in 1969. And what you see inside today is much the same as it was in the 19th century. And that's what's important to know, that the only amenity is electricity. There is no plumbing, there is no bathroom, there's no facility. Um, and it is as it is, and if you look around, the wood is unfinished. The only painted surface of wood is the rail around the pulpit area. And that means it takes a lot of work and money to keep the church in good condition. When you have a building 168 years old, there's always something that needs work. Through the years, Chris applied for a grant to raise the church's foundation. Donations help pay for paint for the shutters. Volunteers do much of the work. So we've been blessed with a lot of people out of the blue. When we have trouble, somebody steps up to help us. But make no mistake, it's the blood, sweat, and tears Chris pours into Rehoboth that keeps the church alive. She even wrote a book in 2020 called The Tie That Binds. It's my passion. It's something that I think is important. And the more people who know about it, the better. So the next time you're in this part of Washington County, give Chris a call. She'd love to give you a tour of Rehoboth. And who knows, maybe inspire a new generation to step up and get involved. So we've given tours to college classes before, genealogy societies, uh, arts councils. Whether it's two people or a person or whether it's a group, we welcome you. The only thing we say is we don't have a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and for more on how you can visit or get involved at Rehoboth, check out my People in Places Extra podcast for the full conversation with Chris Barber. You can find it today on the WNCT Podcast Network, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. There's a charm to it, I'd say. So, Feels like yeah. family. And it's thanks to craft beer, how two breweries are changing the landscape in one town in the east. Plus, hope you're hungry. We're talking a few restaurants you just have to try next on the People in Places Best of 2021 special. The Best of People in Places 2021 special continues with a look back at our month-long Brew to You tour. Back in July, we spent a whole month raising a glass to a few of the success stories in the burgeoning craft beer scene here in the East. Businesses not only serving up great locally made beer, but making a lasting impact on their communities in the process. That includes the Duck Rabbit Craft Brewery in Farmville, one of the longest running craft breweries in all of North Carolina. We also visit a newer spot in Beaufort, Fishtown Brew House, a tiny place serving up some big flavors. And we stopped in New Bern at Brewery 99, the first brewery to open in Craven County. You can see all the brew to you stories on WNCT.com. 
One of those stops took us to downtown Winterville, and there's a bit of a renaissance going on in the heart of this Greenville suburb, and craft beer is a big reason why. It's all aboard for beer in downtown Winterville. It has changed so much from three years ago. And a large part of the change is from two family-owned craft breweries located just one block apart. We thought that this would be just a very quiet, out-of-the-way tap room, and Winterville's growth has taken us completely by surprise. We knew it was a a growing community, maybe not an explosively growing community. Benjamin Self and his wife Amy opened this place, Local Oak Brewing Company, back in December 2019. Just down the street, one month later, here along Main Street, John Tart and husband and wife team of Chuck and Janice Smith poured the first pint at Naughty Dog Brewing Company. Honestly, it's been a kind of a blessing to have another brewery open up because it creates more foot traffic. When people have two places to visit instead of one, it becomes more of a destination. Have you seen a change just from those two businesses opening? Absolutely. Stephen Penn is Winterville's economic development planner. He says many new businesses, including several restaurants, are joining in on the downtown boom. The restaurants, the breweries, that's really what you want in a downtown area to create this vibrant, lively area. But for many, a trip here starts with beer. Coming into a brewery versus like just going to the bar, it's an experience walking in here. An experience many in this area are quickly becoming big fans of. Peaceful place, quiet place. I think this is the way to go. But quiet so you can like hear each other talk yeah. and laugh and build yeah. those kind of memories, you there, know? There's a charm to it, I'd say. So, Feels yeah. like family. We've seen more and more families start to migrate down here. Uh, we're getting locals that are want to come here and make this their regular place, or they go to local local and make that their regular place, or they float back and forth. We're quiet, we're not intimidating, and they feel safe bringing their young kids here. That speaks a lot to the atmosphere of little tap rooms like ours. And the word about Winterville is spreading, as Ben found out recently when some out-of-state visitors stopped by Local Oak. And they said that they had come from Maryland to come try our beers and to try the other beers in the area. That's when it was real. That's when I was truly taken aback that we had actually managed to get a little bit of name for ourselves. That was incredibly encouraging. And the Winterville Chamber of Commerce honored Local Oak as their 2020 Business of the Year. As for downtown Winterville, popular Greenville sports bar Tiebreakers opened a second location along Railroad Street a few months back, right between the two breweries. Beyond blessed to have a, a business like this, already had the foundation. Blessed to be in the barbecue business. Next on People and Places, how some fresh meat is bringing new flavor to a legendary restaurant in more ways than one. Our People and Places Best of 2021 special continues now with a look at some great restaurants in the East. And honestly, visiting some of these hidden gems is one of the best parts of my job. But it's not just about the food, it's also the people behind these restaurants. Places like La Cassetta, a restaurant tucked away in the small Pitt County town of Bethel, bringing an authentic taste of Italy to ENC. And the owners are straight out of Sicily, something you can quickly tell when you first meet owners Giuseppe and Angela Amato. Down in Aden, there's a place serving up some mouth-watering seafood. Friday Night Fish opened in 2019 along 1st Street, the lifelong dream of owner Tania Pollard Wallace. The first restaurant in Aden, founded and owned by an African-American woman, is now a hit after Tania overcame several setbacks, including a stroke, to get to this point. But we can't talk food in the East without talking barbecue. It is simply a way of life. Barbecue restaurants, though, mean more than just a place to get chopped pork and that tangy vinegar sauce. Right now, we're sitting down at this restaurant in Martin County where a new owner is cooking up unique ideas while keeping traditions alive. For generations, folks have flocked to Shaw's Barbecue House in Williamston. This community is Shaw's. In the same spot along West Avenue since 1976. The food, the food is delicious. I just love it. Williamson native Aretha Razor should know 
She's worked here for 26 years. And I have a good boss mate. These days, there's a new boss. Gary Manning bought Shaw's late last year, stepping away from the masonry business to chase a lifelong dream. Finally took that leap and was beyond blessed to have a, a business like this. Already had the foundation um, of the service that it had for so many years. And Gary is now building on that foundation. All the staples are here. Classic Eastern North Carolina barbecue, coleslaw, hush puppies and corn sticks, and more. But he's adding some new touches, like pulled pork lasagna and barbecue tacos. Anything I can put barbecue in. And, but our most famous is the barbecue egg roll. Oh, yes, you heard that right. Barbecue, collards, and pimento cheese wrapped up and deep fried. And you should watch your people's face when they try because they're a little nervous about the combination. Trust me, there's no need to be nervous. Just part of the variety offered here morning, noon, and night. It's a long day. We start early in the mornings uh, on our biscuits and um, breakfast items and go right into lunch and stay up until dinner. Gary isn't doing it alone. His daughter, Daylin, is along for the ride. Hoping Shaw's makes the same impact on others as it did on her. Locally owned businesses, they're going downhill with the pandemic and stuff. I just want to make sure it stays because like I want my kids one day to be like, oh, I want to go here and eat. And by the looks of the crowds here, plenty others do too. The public is beautiful. You know, we meet different people and people from everywhere just comes here. We just have it going. And now it's up to some new blood to keep it going. I was able to step in into a, a, a business that was just already made. Now you put your own touch on it. Now put my own touch. G-Man's touch. And for more on Shaw's, check out the People in Places Extra podcast episode featuring Gary Manning. How they're now using sausage and making it right there in the facility to keep a different Martin County tradition alive in the process, plus so much more. And I was magnetically being pulled back to Kenston. It was just... I was meant to be home. He traveled to all 50 states and dozens of countries. Now he's back home crafting cocktails to bring the community together. The story of Stanley's Saloon next on People in Places. Earlier on our People in Places Best of 2021 special, we highlighted local craft breweries as part of our Brew to You tour. Right now, though, a different libation is our focus, wine. The United States is the fourth largest producer of wine in the world, and a love of wine led a retired couple to do something unheard of in Pitt County. When you think of wine, France or Italy probably come to mind. Maybe California's Napa Valley. You likely don't think of Pitt County, North Carolina. Over 1,200 vines covering six acres, 10 varieties of Muscadine grapes. This is Seven Pines Vineyard and Winery. It's something new and it's something different. Pitt County's first winery. Philip Guy and his wife Corinne officially started Seven Pines in 2015, but the roots of the winery go back to 2002 when they planted the first vines just outside their home near Falkland, simply to have grapes to eat. A few years later, we started making some homemade wine and learning more about it, and uh, I took some courses at a local community college. And what began as a hobby eventually turned into a business. And then we realized that there were no wineries at all in Pitt County or surrounding counties. Plenty of wonderful local breweries, distilleries, but no wineries. So we decided to go ahead and let it be something that we would do in retirement. So much for rest and relaxation. We do everything by hand. We hand harvest. We don't do machines. And we only harvest by hand the ripest grapes. We hand crush those grapes. Fermentation is in small batches. That gives us better control. We filter it, bottle it by hand, cork it by hand, do it at labels by hand, one at a time, you know. Now you can find more than a dozen labels of Seven Pines at several wine shops in the East and every Saturday at Pitt County's Leroy James Farmer's Market. People love to support local uh, businesses, especially local vineyards and wineries. As for the wine itself, classics like Pinot Grigio and Chardonnay. We also offer fruit flavored wines. A uh, big seller is a wine that's called Crisp and Cool. It is a Riesling wine flavored with green apple juice. Some even winning awards at the NC State Fair wine competition. We wake up, I can walk out my back door and I'm in the middle of a winery to be able to come out here and work every day with your hands and produce something that people love. So it's a great feeling. Finally, the story of one man who's traveled the world only to come back home and start over. 
Now he's using cocktails and the stories of his adventures to bring the community together. One of the tiniest buildings in Kinston sits at the corner of Mitchell Street and French Lane. It's tiny, but dynamite comes in a small package. This is Stanley's Saloon, the brainchild of one man. My name's Travis Stanley Harper. Born in Kinston and raised in Greene County, Harper not only owns the place, he's also the sole bartender. By running things, kind of craft cocktails with a story. So each picture's got a story, each drink's got a story. And those stories began accumulating about a decade ago, represented by the dozens of pictures adorning the walls. Basically spent my entire 20s traveling the world, all 50 states. Then to Central America. I went to Costa Rica, then we went to Nicaragua. Across the Atlantic to Europe. Germany, Austria, Italy, and Switzerland. Down to South America. Peru, Bolivia, and Chile for a month. Literally got like a, a travel addiction, which I think was a good addiction to have. Back in the U.S., he lived and worked in Southern California for a bit. Pretty much catering to celebrity. I served Jay-Z his own champagne, so at the Chateau Mormont in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard. But the pull to travel abroad grew stronger. Thailand for a month, Vietnam for a month. I went to Sumatra, Indonesia for a month, and then back to Vietnam to start teaching English, which I randomly got a job doing out there. And about that time, the coronavirus pandemic hit. And I was magnetically being pulled back to Kinston. It was just, I was meant to be home. And a few months later, the idea for Stanley's saloon came about. I'm glad to have him back. <clears throat> I'm glad to be back. Ain't no place I'd rather be now. That's Travis's mother, Terry. She helps out at the saloon, ecstatic her son is back in ENC. I never thought he would want to settle down here, really. He's just really brought out a great to the community here in Kinston, too, really. And I think it's super, super that he's done this. I appreciate that. And what he's done is bring together people from all over Kinston and the East with one goal in mind. I don't want TVs in here. I want human to human connection. I want people to feel at home and lay back here. Just phenomenal guests. I've been having a great time. I've been having the best conversations. I'm hoarse right now from talking so much. So. I've been loving it, man. I really have. No Jay-Z yet, though. No, Jay-Z hasn't shown up yet. In the meantime, Travis says he's happy to be back home, serving up drinks and striking up conversation with new friends. I think this adventure is, is probably fulfilling me just as much, if not more, than, than, than any adventure I've ever been on. And it's the old saying, you know, all roads lead home, and that fits you perfectly. That's true. And I'll say, the road goes on forever, but the party never ends. <laughs> That's another one. <laughs> Before we go, a reminder to check out all the People and Places Extra podcasts available right now on the WNCT Podcast Network, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. And you can head over to WNCT.com anytime to watch all of our previous People and Places segments. And as we turn the calendar to a new year, we'd love to hear your ideas for future segments. Just send me an email or reach out to me on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you so much for spending time with us on our look back at our favorite people and places of 2021. I'm Ken Watlington. I'll see you in 2022.